Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. The Comet 67P has provided an avalanche of astonishing discoveries that may puzzle scientists for years to come. And one problem that will simply not go away is the seemingly impossible dunes, or dune-like ripples at the comet's neck. At its first observation, the feature drew gasps of disbelief from scientists and science media alike. As planetary geologist Emily Lakdawalla wrote on October 28, 2014, other features are odd because they look familiar and yet have no right being on a comet. I've called them rhythmic ridges, but to pretty much everyone who looks at them, they look like sand dunes, which are just plain impossible on a body that has neither atmosphere nor much of any gravity. More recent, close-up images of the impossible dunes have only deepened the mystery. Emily Lakdawalla is of course correct. Within the standard model of comets and comet origins, so-called sand dunes or dune-like ripples are clearly impossible. However, mission scientists have had no choice but to grasp for an explanation. They have suggested that the comet's jets act as a kind of wind to create a duning process, despite the absence of the required atmosphere. Dr. Nicholas Thomas said to the New York Times, You have to ask yourself, is that possible? You can convince yourself you can make them move. It's plausible, at least at the moment. This remarkable conjecture has even been given a scientific-sounding name localized gas-driven transport. A hint of another possibility has been suggested on at least one science news service. On January 24th, the Universe Today website suggested of the dune-like ripples formation. Electrostatic levitation of dust charged by sunlight may also play a role. Indeed, electrostatic dust levitation on the Moon has been a subject of scientific interest for several decades, since Apollo astronauts observed fountains of dust hundreds of kilometers above the lunar surface. The implications of this discovery have long been clear for other airless bodies in the solar system. We can now see on the horizon of the illuminated portion of 67P's nucleus a cloud of dust lit by the Sun. Both the behavior of the jets and the comet's dust layers defy the notion of an icy body moving through an electrically inert vacuum. The increasingly energetic, filamentary jets are aligned and draw together, and it appears that the dust is being gathered into unique configurations on the surface and globally levitated above the surface. This increases the confidence of Electric Universe proponents that surface electrical activity could profoundly reconfigure the dust layers in the course of the next few months. We note that the most abundant and energetic jets originate at the comet's neck, which is frequently in shadow and is the coldest region on the nucleus, which means it should be the least active region if solar warming is the cause of the jets. Nor have we seen evidence that the jets are connected to the supposed pressurized chambers, which are said to provide the, quote, nozzles from which the jets explode. As noted in a recent Space News episode, for more than 15 years, members of the Electric Universe community have been exploring the effects of electrical discharges and electric fields on surface dust. These experiments have successfully replicated many familiar planetary features including dunes and dune-like ripples, confirming the ability of the electrical force to organize dust material much more efficiently than mechanical wind or gravity alone. Consider also the significance of this experimental research for our understanding of planetary science. The planet Mars has an atmosphere less than 1% as dense as Earth's, and yet scientists have puzzled for decades over the planet's towering dust devils and global dust storms. Today, the electrified nature of the giant dust devils has been acknowledged by NASA investigators. Mechanical wind alone does not explain the Martian sand dunes any more than it can explain the dunes on 67P. In the past few decades, scientific papers have suggested minor electrostatic and photoelectric effects on comets and asteroids. But comet theorists as a whole have yet to give serious attention to the electric universe theory of a comet. The electrical interpretation sees comets as negatively charged bodies moving through a weak electric field of the sun. Comets simply pick up the negative charge during their time at greater distances from the sun. 
A new scientific paper appears to have confirmed yet another prediction of this theory. In the fall of 2014, the Rosetta Orbiter's ion and electron sensor measured a high level of excess electrons surprisingly close to 67P's nucleus. The paper reads, IES has revealed the presence of greatly enhanced electron fluxes and densities, which appear to be associated with cometary ions created near the nucleus. Electron fluxes within a couple of hundred of kilometers of the nucleus greatly exceed solar wind electron fluxes. The presence of surprising densities of electrons near the comet nucleus is precisely what we do expect if cometary displays are electric discharge phenomena. The successful predictive record of the electric comet theory stands in stark contrast to the record of the 65-year-old dirty snowball model. Indeed, in recent weeks, we've seen some remarkable statements from the Rosetta team. In January, Dr. Nicholas Thomas was quoted as saying by the sciencenews.org website, Rosetta has blown the dirty snowball idea out of the water. However, the ad hoc theories constructed by the Rosetta team still hold to the original story of comets as primordial icy bodies from the early solar system. How institutional science responds to the now acknowledged falsification of the dirty snowball model will be a crucial test of its health and integrity. Whatever the outcome, the current challenges for comet scientists will simply not go away. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.